See, you can only love out of strength. It takes strength to love. You got to speak with purpose. We think that our salvation is based on performance. God is not a man that he can lie. He don't lie. You'll be a vessel that God is worth. Because you somebody might need your holy prayer to save them when they Hi, this is Dr. Will Wheat, and today we're going to be talking about the principles of miracles. We're going to start at number 19. Before I told you that there are over 50 principles that's listed in the book, A Course in Miracles, but we're just going to go over a few of them, and that's just to lay the groundwork of the thought that we will be expressing to you. Now, I'm very aware that some of the teachings will be new and a new way of thinking. And that's, there's an adjustment for those of you who are open and receptive to teaching. For those of you who are fixed in your thought process and your belief system, I still think that there's something here that you can be benefited by if you would just take the time to listen and think about what's being said. So that was the purpose of offering uh, this course. One of the reasons that, that burned true in my heart for offering the course is my desire to see all men recognize who they are in Christ. My desire to see all men released from, from sickness, from all types of distortions and contradictions that will lead them into depression, lead them into murders, or cause them to be victims of diseases, or all kinds of victim circumstances that is needless and unnecessary. If, we, if all of the world could see through the eyes and the logic of God. So we start with a few, and we start, we start uh, with being faithful with the few that has been entrusted to us with the belief and the dream that they will share with their family and their friends, and this few will grow and grow and grow until the whole world is affected um, by the truth that I believe lies in this message. Now, certainly, I don't know all things. Certainly, I am not the Bible answer man. I have a part that has been assigned to me, and I'm doing my part. But you listening may have a part as well. And hooking together, we can use our parts to show the complete picture of salvation, what it looks like, and the power that is really ours. And then we need to recognize what has been vested in us by God himself. And that much of what we go through is our own creation that he has to be faithful to because he's given us the ability to create as he is a creator. But we have to rethink some things. We got to quit uh, excusing our behavior and confusing it with the behavior of some entity outside of ourselves and understand that God is only dealing with us directly and not no, no third party, but he's dealing with us directly. And so once we understand that and begin to uh, take on the consciousness, and I'm kind of ne negligent to say responsibility because I don't want to use the word negatively, it's a positive word, take on the responsibility of being what God created us to be, we will be teachers and learners of the truth. So we go over some thought. We just, we just uh, use this as a guideline to put out thought uh, so that it can wash your mind, so it can cleanse you up, and help you begin to move from any type of darkness into His marvelous light. Now let's talk about miracles for a minute. Miracles can uh, make minds one in God. Miracles make minds one in God. They depend on cooperation because the sonship is the sum of all the souls God created. Miracles therefore rest on the laws of eternity and not on time. Miracle rests on the laws of eternity and not on time. Technically, the mind, our consciousness in the world that we created, has a past, a present, and a future. The world that we created actually says that the past will dictate our future, our will determine the outcome of our future. And now, even though we have moved past the past and we are present, in our present is just a small exchange toward our future. We actually think that what we are experiencing, what we are going through in our present is just a foretaste of the future which has been determined by our past. 
and that's not true. Very few of us know how to operate in now and what now really means. For me, now is an eternity word and not a time word. Because in eternity, there's only one truth and one logic. And that one truth and that one logic is God's truth and God's logic now, eternally now. So when we learn not to live in the past, but to live in God's logic, which is the now, and we'll let tomorrow worry about itself, but we live in God's now, and not let the past determine our now. We let God determine our now. We let God's decisions determine our now. We let God's uh, definition of who we are determine our now. God's logic of what we, what we are and why we're here determine our now. And and now is is always whatever is now is always. There's no there's no distortion uh, in now. And we're going to learn that as we proceed. Uh, the next one uh, miracles. This is twenty miracles reawaken the awareness that the spirit, not the body, is the altar of, of truth. This is the recognition that leads to the healing power of the miracle. I'd like to read that again. Miracles reawaken the awareness that the spirit, not the body, is the altar of the truth. It's not the body, but the spirit is the altar of the truth. Many of us are listening to our bodies. Uh, one of uh, our friend's favorite uh, texts is in Corinthians that says, "We walk not by our we walk. I'm sorry, we walk by faith and not by our senses, or, and that means that we're not letting the body determine our walk, our belief system. It's our faith in what God has delivered us to and from. It's how we live. It's how we walk. It's how we project. It's how we perceive." It's, it's, it's the basis of our perception, not the body, not our past, but what God's Word has said and declared about each and every one of us, as well as our brothers. So we see our brothers not by their behavior. We see our brothers by God's projection or God's determination or God's pronunciation of who they are in Christ. So miracles awaken the awareness. Miracles awaken the awareness that the spirit, not the body, is the altar of truth. So we're not going to let the body tell us who we are, where we are, and how we're doing. The Word of God does that for us. This is the recognition that leads to the healing power of the miracle. Number 21, miracles are natural expressions of total forgiveness. Say that again. Miracles are natural expressions of total forgiveness. Through miracles, man can accept God's forgiveness by extending it to others. So when you receive a miracle or you work a miracle or God works a miracle through you, that is the manifestation of the maximal love of God extending forgiveness not only to you, the worker, but to him though that is receiving the miracle. Verse 22, miracles are associated with fear only because of the fallacious belief that darkness can hide. Man believes that what he cannot see does not exist, and his physical eyes cannot see in the dark. This is a very primitive solution and has led to a denial of, of the spiritual eye. The term spiritual eye is, is, is replaced with the Holy Spirit in our teaching, and the physical eye becomes the ego. The emphasis on the two ways of seeing, however, remains throughout. The escape from darkness involves two stages. Stage number one, the recognition that darkness cannot hide. The step, this step usually entails fear. Darkness cannot hide. Number two, our recognition number two, the recognition that there is nothing you want to hide, even if you could. This step brings escape from fear. See, fear will make you want to hide something. I think you, there's a necessity to hide something. Fear of whatever, fear of exposure, uh, fear of rejection, so you begin to hide. But when you bring to the forefront what you thought you should hide, it's an escape from fear. One of the thoughts that come to mind is the verse that we should confess our faults one to another and pray for one another. So once you have a fault or error, and you say, man, I made this mistake, you know, and I, and, and I, and I need your agreement that 
this mistake is corrected out of my life. The power of that mistake is gone. Now that your brother can, can help you through just agreeing with you that the power is gone and that the correction is made and you live in the correction and not constantly repeat the mistake. Another positive uh, thing is now that you've corrected it, you won't repeat it. You know, see, when you have an error and you correct the error, you won't continually repeat it. But if you leave the error uncorrected, you'll find that you will continually uh, repeat that error. Um, and then we're going to close with the last one. The last one here is miracles rearrange perception and place the levels of perception in true perception. I'm sorry, in true pers perspective. Let's read that again. I just I'm just messing that up. Miracles rearrange perception and place the levels of perception in true in true perspective. This heals at all levels because sickness comes from confusing the levels. Later on, we're going to talk to you as we begin to look in the spirit. There are not many different levels. But for, so, for those of us who are conscious of time, conscious of up and down and, and, and time, and that's, that's our thought process, we have to deal with that gently to lead you away from this, because there's really no levels. There's just one uh, position in God, and that's you are healed, not different levels. That's but we have to help people gently move from that, especially if you're time conscious, especially if you believe there's a certain level. I'm on this level, you on that level. That does not exist in Christ Jesus. We are on a straight line, and that straight line is the same from God to his sons, or from God to his son. It's not a different line that we're on. Well, this is Dr. Wilby, and we will continue this thought and these lessons in the next video. Make sure you stay tuned. Look for it in your email or on YouTube for the next video. We're going to proceed through this, and our goal is by the time of the end of this course, we all will be miracle workers in Jesus' name. But remember this also, that God has plans for your life, and none of those plans include People of Greater Los Angeles, Apostle Will Wheat has a word from God that is revealing, powerful, and life-changing. Every Sunday, lives are being transformed by this powerful word from God. Families, businesses, church leaders, and the world are hearing God's plans for their lives. And none of those plans include defeat. It has been said that there have been Jesus sightings in his services. So you owe it to yourself to be a part of one of the greatest movements and Jesus sightings that this city has ever experienced. And you can download Apostle Week Sunday messages for free at nccfc.net. Nccfc.net. Sunday services are at 1 p.m. And midweek services are Wednesdays at 7 p.m. There is faith for your destiny at nccfc.net. Nccfc